Okay, so <laughs> let's take a look at some pictures. I uh, I think I'm the first person to make their own Fuji mount lens, and it's a, a single element lens. And here it is. I made it out of a uh, body cap. Not only that, a very thin uh, body cap. Um, now, pinhole, now, this is not an image from the lens. This is an actual image, and I'll post the links below. There's uh, actual um, uh, sticky um, foil tape underneath that, which is actually used for ducting. And then I uh, punched in there a really, really tiny hole about... I don't know, a fourth of a millimeter in diameter. And on top of that is this rear element off of a 50 millimeter F18 pancake, just the rear element only. Actually, unscrew this. I got a bunch of these that are actually broken and crudded up. This just actually unscrews. And I use that lens, so that's it. <laughs> Let's uh, take a look at some of the images. I actually like the effect of this. There's some daffodils, people. Pointed me out. Let me grab the daffodils over here. There we go. I should have put them on the table to begin with, right? There we go. I was always calling these buttercups. That's what I was told. But they're daffodils, right? Okay, whatever. Anyway, there's a picture of a couple of Fuji. Uh, this uh, we're taking with the Fujifilm X-T2 um, at 12,800 ISO. There's some more pictures. This one actually is really nice. Um, the detail is quite stark. You can never take uh, handheld indoor shots like this with a regular pinhole camera, nor do pinhole, pinhole lenses, or actually pinholes, you just actually pop a hole in a body cap and uh, use that. It does not have that sort of uh, image results. This is actually taken in a mirror using the lens also. The saturation and uh, detail is actually quite nice. Um, yeah, that's me actually bracing since it's kind of dimly lit in the bathroom. <laughs> so I'm actually bracing the camera, I think, at like a fourth of a second. The other shots, however, that's an outdoor shot. The other shots, however, were handheld at a 30th or a 60th of a second. That was like at a 30th of a second, I think. Um, wasn't it a 30th of a second? Um, well, yeah, that was a thirtieth of a second. Um, that's pretty damn good. So, um, people that are hardcore, is it sharp? Is it sharp? People like that, they don't get it. Um, but uh, people actually pay several hundred dollars to get a uh, <laughs> to get a um, a uh, Russian-made Zenit lens to actually uh, produce these sort of results. The bouquet, and I didn't upload a bouquet shot. The bouquet is actually really fabulous. I should have uploaded a bouquet shot to show the bokeh of this lens. Technically, it is a lens because there is an actual glass element. It's the exact same thing as the rear element off this 50 millimeter pancake Nikkor. And uh, I just centered it and taped it on there over top of a uh, centered pinhole. Um, works exquisitely. So you don't have to worry about focus and you don't have to worry about aperture with this lens. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't put it face down like that. Actually this is so nice um, as far as the unique effect that it gives is that I'm actually gonna also it doesn't add any thickness to your bot to the uh, to the camera body that I'm actually going to use this believe it or not uh, for certain things that I have in mind. Um, I love the bouquet and the, the vignetting, and I'm I, sorry I didn't upload a bouquet shot, I was just shooting some Christmas tree lights. I, uh, I've been in such a hurry. Um, but there it is mounted on the camera. That was an iPhone photo though, however, of it mounted on the X-T2. Um, quite amazing, so I think I'm the first person to do it. I mean, technically it is a Fuji X-mount, since it's a Fuji body cap, and it does have glass in it, so... I think I'm the first person to make a Fuji X mount, first like human being, like, you know, non, you know, lens related company, not Sam Yang or Fuji. So I think I'm the first, you know, sole individual critter to, uh, yeah, I know it hardly qualifies, right? <laughs> it still technically qualifies. Um, I was actually surprised at the results, and, uh, 
I had to try four different lens elements. I, I've got a lot of lens elements laying around. And uh, this one's nice. Let me mount it on the Fuji. You can see how small it is right now. I was just shooting it with uh, this camera. And uh, talk about carrying this underneath your jacket pocket. You can just keep this on here, like when I don't have a lens mounted. And technically, I can just turn it on right now. Except cranking up the ISO. Cranking up the ISO there. Um, and aperture priority. I'm shooting all manual, obviously. And there we go. Ta da! <laughs> That's even a lot thinner than the 27mm pancake lens. However, not as sharp, right? Is it sharp? Is it sharp? That's all some people care about on a lens. You know, photography, if the sharpness was the only thing that was important, then like Salvador Dali and all those million, million dollar impressionistic paintings, which are absolutely not detail sharp, they're the complete opposite of that, you know, those things would not exist. However, they do exist and they're worth a lot of money. Not saying this is worth any money, but uh, people don't know what art is. They think that... Uh... Now, I found that uh, these looked really nice viewing them. Um, at not this size, but uh, a little bit smaller at 4x5. At normal viewing distance, these images actually look nice. I think they look nice at a 4x5 viewing distance. Uh, really do. So, I hope you like that. That is my one element Fujifilm lens. <laughs> hey, it works! It, it's even easier. All I have to do is just... Uh, Keep it at 12,000. Well, outside, when it's really, really bright outside, I could actually shoot this at like 3,200 ISO and uh, like uh, 60th or 30th of a second when it's bright and sunny outside. I actually have some neat ideas for use with this lens, so I'm going to try them out when I head to Florida here in a few days. But uh, this is a keeper. I'm not going to disassemble this. It's actually quite nice. I had a, a wild hair to make one of these. So there it is. Um, this was totally free to make. It was like using a $1 body cap from China. And uh, yeah, and uh, I got a bunch of broken ones of these that I keep around for spare parts. These uh, 50 millimeter 1.8 pancake Nikors. I hope you like it. I love doing stuff like this, actually. I love getting creative. You know, if you're not creative, then what the fuck are you doing with photography anyway? Is photography about being creative and pushing the boundaries and like exploring instead of being like a douche, like working in a box, you know, like a, a horse with the blinders on. Uh 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 uh. Is it sharp? Is it sharp? Must frame, must frame, rule of thirds. Screw all that crap. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, drop a buck or two. Tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. This made me happy. I actually like the results from this lens. Even if you hate it, I actually like it. Thanks. Bye. However, admittedly, those are not interesting subjects that I took a picture of in the test.